and those who have mocked you before, they will celebrate your God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are welcome to God's presence. And I believe in this service, God will give your life a new definition. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our teaching series on Sunday, in Sunday services has been, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? Part 3b. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 8.22, Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is the health, or is not the health of the daughter of my people being restored or recovered? Why then? So if the bomb is there, the sickness is not supposed to be there. If the bomb is there, the disease is not supposed to be there. Glory to God. You know, we have testimonies here that every now and then that glorifies God in a very strange way. The testimony that was being read in first service of a lady, of a woman, who has been for six years, could not walk well, could not stand well. And one of our members here sent her to me on phone that I should pray for her. No, she called and he called and I prayed for her on phone. And I said, what do you want? He said, I want to get my legs back. I want to be able to walk. I said, no problem. God will do it now. Do you believe? He said, yes. Meanwhile, there's a particular white person, white girl, you know, it's UK, so there are more whites there than blacks. Now, there's a white friend of that person who never believed in Jesus. After we prayed on Tuesday, by Wednesday, this late woman was already walking to the glory of Jesus Christ. And as a result, the white individual, whether the lady or a man, said, who did this for you? <laughs> he said, a pastor in South Africa prayed for me. Not a pastor in UK. A pastor in South Africa called on phone and prayed. Now, that's on phone. How much more your physical presence? That one did not hear the word of God. I didn't preach to her. I only prayed. And the word of God is stronger than prayer. Because it is the formation of words that makes prayer. I did not, I mean, teach any word. I only prayed. But you are the so you carry what generates answers because it is the combination of words that makes prayer. <laughs> now, if you, you, are an, you are an embodiment of answer by virtue of the combination of words you are receiving. No prayer without a formation of a statement, and a formation of a statement is a combination of words. Now, you are receiving the wrong word. Which means you are carrying the answer potentially. Only prayer was prayed. Six years ordeal ended. Which means in the service, every curse, every barrier shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no fish in there? Why then? Why not then? Is, the hell, is not the health of my daughter being recovered? Some of us in the service. We are being launched from the service to the realm of no more sickness. Amen. Some of you will be sharing the testimony from six months now, no medication. Amen. One year, no medication. Amen. Ten years, no medication. Amen. If you believe, say, believe in amen. amen. I'm not different from you. We are both human beings. In fact, if you come to church when there is no service, you will not know I'm the pastor because there is no difference between me and others. That's the truth. You know, I went for, to a particular place some time ago, and some guys saw me. They said, I don't know if they're in service. They said, is it the same person we see on the other? I said, yes. He said, yes, it's not you. I said, it's me. They said, the person we see is bigger than you. Ah. I said, it's me. Ah. I was almost confused. I said, she wants to change. You know, I was almost confused that I've not changed. Now, what am I saying? There's a grace here that will raise your shame this morning. There is a grace in this service. The God of my fathers, Bishop Oedebo, the God of my father, Papa Copeland, will fight your enemies today. Yeah. That girl is a new member. She was just invited once or twice. And she was guilty of the allegation. She was dismissed. Authority from above 
change the authority in the office. Yes. <laughs> office authority. He said you are dismissed. Everyone's authority said, no, you can't dismiss. Go back. Power pass power. They say you are dismissed. I said, no, go back. Understand that when you, un when you operate with the understanding of the your covering, you will make declaration without any tension. You are confident of what to say because you know it to come to pass. And I speak into your life this morning, everything that has stopped working will start working. Amen. New organs shall be created. Amen. New organs shall be created. Amen. New body parts shall be reinstated. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Please understand that we need to understand our right to total health in Christ. We need to understand. There's one scripture that God showed me recently that is very powerful. Psalm 119 verse 169. Psalm 119 verse 169. It says, give me understanding according to thy word. <laughs> give me understanding according. Not just give me understanding. Remember, the just shall live by his faith. Give me understanding according, not according to what I know, not according to what they teach, not according to what I hear, according to thy word. That is the dimension of your authority. I want to be in the class of your knowledge so that I can speak at your capacity. I don't, don't want to understand, but according, based on your level of intention, that is to carry out the reason why you spoke the word, the reason why you initiated the word, give me understanding, that is, they can't tell me I have HIV when it's not possible. They can't tell me I am sick when I'm the reason why you are alive. I like you to understand that you are the reason why others are alive. Because you carry life. You are the reason. Because Christ in you, the hope of others. You are the life that makes others to live. Therefore, you can't be told that you lack the life that you offer. Why? Christ is the reason for life. So to have Christ is to be a source of life to others. Glory to God. So under then, according to his word, empowers us to operate in his world. Glory to God. Please get for service teaching. It will also be of help because they are different. First John chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says that behold, what manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it named not. Behold, I mean beloved. Now are we the sons of God. 1 John 3, 1 to 2. And it, it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. What does it mean? In this context, until you see him, I mean, until you understand him, you may not know him. Until you understand him, you may not know him. There are some things, somebody spoke something beside me. I said, no, no, don't say that. It's not possible. He said, forget it. He said, no, his body is like, he said, forget it. There's no story about that. You know, you remember we said something that, who is the, the hunter of elephants? Where the hunter of human beings exists? It's not possible. No matter how smart you are to kill elephants, the hunter, the one that will kill a man will try. Animal will always have animal brain. The brain of a man is forever far developed above the brain of an animal, no matter who the animal is. Even a lion, they still tame a lion. People know how to manipulate a lion based on the training. That's brain. So what are we saying? 
We need to understand our right in Christ in order to make our claims in Christ. Understand your right in Christ to be able to make your claims in Christ. For example now, you have been managing a deck for five years. One day, one day, you go better. One day, one day. You not go better because until you understand that it is your mouth that puts an end to it, you keep saying it will be better. It will be better. It can be better now. Why must it be one day, one day? Why not today? Glory to God. So, when you know him, I mean, when you understand, when you, when you understand him, then you will know him. And as a result, you'll be able to know what you are supposed to be. For example, the Bible says, as he is in heaven, so we are on earth. So the question is this, is God sick in heaven? As he is in heaven, so we are on earth. So does it mean that God is having that in heaven? As he is in heaven, so we are on earth. So I like you to understand that we are supposed to enjoy heaven's order of health. Say heaven's order, heaven's order. of health, health. is my, my portion from today. So if they give you medical report, they say you have uh, uh, stage one diabetes. Say me, I don't even have any stage. Stage one or stage, I don't have any. They didn't see. I said no, you are blind. You, I'm, I can't see anything because I'm perfectly made whole. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But what is in the anointing oil that heals? Quickly understand that the same spirit. Hear me and hear me well now. The same spirit that created heaven and earth in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 is the same spirit that came upon Jesus at baptism. I mean, the same spirit that came upon Mary at conception. Luke, verse, Luke chapter 1, verse 35 and 37. It's the same spirit because the Bible says the only thing shall come upon you. That's the Holy Spirit. He came upon him. Holy Ghost, I mean, he said, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and therefore the only thing shall come upon you, born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. So, the Holy Ghost was the one that came upon him. Ah. Now, the same spirit that was at creation is the same spirit that came upon Jesus, is the same spirit that raised him from the dead. Romans 8, 11. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the death dwells in your in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Now, same spirit, though, same spirit that created heaven and earth, same spirit that came upon Mary that made her to conceive Jesus, same spirit that raised you from the grave, same spirit is the one that will enter this oil. Same spirit. Why? Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 4 to 5. It says that there's one faith. I mean, there's one spirit, one word, and one, one faith, one spirit, one baptism. Everything is one. So we are all, everything, there's no two spirits. It says, and even, no, for, for verse 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 4. He says, there's one body, one spirit, even as he are called in one hope of calling. Verse 5. Verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now, which means the spirit in Genesis is the spirit in Luke, is the spirit in Romans, is the spirit in this oil. Everything the spirit did through Jesus, it will do through this oil. Yeah. It's not a prayer, just believe. Just believe. It's not, just believe. That is the mystery behind my privilege, my declarations. I understand if I say it, it will be. Whether you say amen or not, that's my understanding. Your amen will not change the decree of a law, of a judge. Just say you are going to call, you are, you are, you are jailed. You say amen. Amen doesn't change. You say amen, don't say amen. It doesn't matter. The police will carry you and take you away. That's straight. The judge has spoken. That's the end. I stand here to represent the judge of all. An end is coming to your oppression. Yeah. 
I stand to represent the judge of all. Hebrews 12, 24. He said, we have come to the judge of all. And the judge of all has the final say. An end is coming to every spell in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So, same spirit. Say, same spirit. Same spirit. Therefore, that spirit will answer your life today. Amen. What is in the anointing oil that heals? Among others, the mystery of the fan and the fire. Say fan. Oh, sorry. Fan. Say fan. And uh, fire. <laughs> fire. The, the mystery of the fan and fire. So we'll be teaching uh, English in, 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 in church. Now, the mystery of the fan and fire. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11 and 12. The Bible says, indeed, he baptizes you with water. But he that is coming after me, whose shoes I cannot bear, he will baptize you with Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, verse 12, whose friend, friend sorry, whose friend is in his hand. Now, what is the purpose of the fan? Understand. Every sickness and disease, every shame and reproach, discomfort and illness, three, three months going to hospital, flu that witches are not having. Now, disease and shame, evil thoughts of suicide, negative thoughts, disappointment and shame, Whatever is negative inside you, he said he has fear. In his end, he will totally purge. He will sweep. He will cleanse it. He will cause everything. He will put them together. Verse 12. He says he will put them together and he will consume them with unquenchable fire. Say unquenchable fire. Which means whatever God deals with today in this service. Is the dealt with forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Meaning unquenchable, which means no devil can come here you again. After today, it is over with that shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So the mystery of the fan and fire. <laughs> Bible speaking book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 13. It says, Whatever my father in heaven has not planted shall be what? Rooted up. Even though you are a lawful captive, maybe you went to sleep with someone and a snake entered you. Maybe by virtue of what your parents have done, they place a curse on your family, on your lineage. Whatever my father in heaven has not planted, the Bible says shall be rooted up. Right now, I decree they are rooted up in the name of Jesus Christ. They are rooted up in the name of Jesus Christ. They are rooted up in the name of Jesus Christ. When we are making another call, the prayer I'm about to pray right now, if you know you fall in that category, please come out. When we are making another call. I'm about to make a declaration now based on the fact that you are guilty. But this scripture will set you free. Isaiah 49, verse 24. Isaiah 49. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive be delivered? Yes, you have slept with all the ladies in the world. Yes, you have become a chicken change for men all over the streets. Yes, you have wasted your life with alcohol. Yes, you are lawful. You are a lawful captive. Shall a love can be delivered? Verse 40, verse 20, I mean, 25. But thus said the Lord, but mind you, when I make other call, come out. That's when this will be established. But thus said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible be delivered. For I, the king of kings, the judge of all, will contend with him that contend with thee, and I will save thy children. Today, my God is setting you free. Amen. Even though you are a lawful captive, that statement is important. God knows that you are guilty. He knows that you have smoked your life away. 
that is you have smoked your lungs to cancer. It's just about to show. You know, some people, they've, they've, they've put their life under danger. They don't know. One appearance in hospital like this, they are dead. Because they will just tell them that you have TB, you have tuberculosis, you have diabetes, you have this. <laughs> because now, they are just, they are just as gegere. You know what they call gegere? They are just like this. By virtue of the way they've lived their lives, all those viruses, they package themselves that one day, one day, I will show you. They put pocket themselves because they have wasted their life. But God is telling me to tell you this morning: if you will repent, you will you will repent your life. If you will repent, you will restore your life. How you have lived your life is not as important how, as how you start living your life. So if you will repent, it will repent. If you will repent, it will rebuild the foundation. Remember, God is the God of all. All things are possible with him. And in this service, God will show you mercy. Amen. God will show you mercy. Amen. God will show you mercy. Amen. What is an anointing oil that heals? The spirit of the Lord that set the captives free. The spirit of the Lord that set the captives free. Please understand that curses are bondages. Curses are bondages. When you are under a curse, you are inside a bondage. When you are un under a curse, you are as good as inside a cage. Like I was sharing humorously by the grace of God in first service, that the chickens that we kill every day, they are not happy with us. Meet any chicken. That is about to be killed. He said, Alpha. He said, No foul. <laughs> they want to kill me. He said, Alpha. Chickens hate you because you kill them. <laughs> when chickens see human beings, especially in this house, South Africa, they are angry. <laughs> say, Ah, I don't know when they will come and kill me now. Eh? Look at these people. Crazy. Dangerous. They abuse you. They, it, it's not that they can't speak well. When they say cuckoo, cuckoo, they are abusing you. Cuckoo, 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 cuckoo. They are not happy. Oh. They, are, they are abusing you. Thank God for the mercy of God. <laughs> no. It's because they are not, they are incapacitated. They are helpless. If chickens can fight, I'm telling you, you have bruises. But they are helpless. Hence, the last time I killed chicken, several years ago, you take the, for those who don't know how to kill, you take the feathers like this, like that, like this, like that. <laughs> now, but you know that when I kill chicken, I can't eat it. You know, my mind, my, ah, I feel, I feel, I feel, I even feel for chicken. I'm telling you, if I kill a chicken, I can't eat it. If I eat it, I'll be feeling bad. Ah, wickedness. Wickedness. I'm being sincere. That's, that's why, listen, that's why I'm passionate for human beings. I'm telling you. Even chicken, I'm passionate for them. But the one they've killed, I can eat. At least, it's not me. I, I, I didn't kill it. It's not from my hand. The blood is not my neck. <laughs> the blood is on the butch butchers, the one that killed. But me, I can eat it. It's not, it's not my fault. Now, but where am I driving at, practically speaking? If chickens can fight you, they will fight you back. The practical lesson is this. Many of us have become chickens. We are caged. When chickens are in a cage, what you throw to them is what they eat. They can say, no, no, no. You know what? What double? What they give is what you eat because you are limited. You are in a bondage. That's why people die anyhow. Because they don't have power over their lives. That's a generational case. They say in some families, ah, they don't go beyond 50. Once they are 49, pam. Some families, 45. Once they are 44, pam. Just because they are like chickens awaiting the day of slaughter. This day, everyone under that siege, I stand as an authority and I decree a freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
And that's why the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. I beg your pardon. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. It says, the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty means freedom. Liberty means liberation. Liberty means emancipation. You are out of the bondage that whoever has placed you. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Maybe you have been addicted to marijuana. Addicted to cocaine. Addicted to drugs. It is no you. Those who are addicted to drugs, you see their hands shaking. It is not them again. It is not a bondage. They can't say no again. Some people, if they don't smoke, they can't sleep. It's a bondage, sir. You see, some people, their children, they are, they are, everybody in the family smokes. Oh, yeah, come and smoke now. Smoke, ah, smoke, with my friend. They will be, ah, it's a bondage. It's not natural to be doing what is evil against you. It's not natural, sir. If you smoke here and you think you are natural, it's a lie. You are under demons. Accept or reject. You know I'm blunt. It is not natural to be killing. They wrote it on the cigarette pamphlet that smokers are liable to die. It doesn't matter. They say smokers are cancer. I say yeah, it's fine. It's not natural. It's a demon, sir. Accept or reject. If you smoke here, you are under an oppression of the devil. I don't care how you feel. I care how your future is. The truth is this. You have been blindfolded. The devil has made you not to see that you are under a curse. How would you use your hand to be killing yourself gradually? It's not natural. It's demon, you are demonized. And today, if you want to be free, you'll be free. Yeah. Why did I say if you want to be free? Because it's choice. Pastor, leave me alone. I beg you. I beg I will change one day. Some people can think like that. It's choice. Like, I'll, good. Thank you, Jesus. I was driving home yesterday, and my younger sister was telling me, and someone was telling me of how two guys died in Hatfield just yesterday while they were going to buy cigarettes. A car hit them, pa, and they died. Students of UP. What nonsense. What ir irrational thoughts. Five rand wreck a whole destiny. What ash. Look, you to think about it. to go and buy cigarettes to die. Abba. To waste the grace of God upon a destiny. God stood on the floor to mold you and make you, intended you for greatness. You wasted yourself on nonsense. I felt, as I was driving, I felt touched. I said, ah, what a life. To go and buy cigarettes, car hit them, they died. To go and buy cigarettes. Don't go and buy, don't go, ah, don't go and buy food. Think about it. Two people die same day. Two families under sorrow, suddenly. A whole school lost two people in just one day. Just because of going and buying things. Is, is that not demonized? Is that not demonic? Please accept the truth and let it enter your bone marrow and say no today. Pastor, it has touched me. I'm not doing it again. I say no, one day, one day. One day, one day may be your day of error. Glory to God. What am I driving at? The spirit of the Lord is the one that set the captives free. You allow him to enter. The Bible says, John chapter 1 verse 12, as men that receive him. That's why if you don't receive this word, it can't change your life. As men that receive him, that he gave power. Don't say pastor is difficult. No. Receive the word. It will empower you to change. Receive it. Embrace it. Accept it. And tell God, Lord, I'm no more your enemy with this activity. I refuse to be used of the devil against your word. God said, don't do it. He said, no, God, I will change one day. Maybe you are here. You are having ulcer. You are having asthma. God has died for your, I mean, sorry. Jesus Christ has died for your ulcer. He has died for your asthma. And in this service, you are going free. Amen. Say, I'm 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 going free. Amen. You are free in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, inside the anointing oil, 
is the power of God that heals all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. All manner. All includes the one that doctors are yet to discover. All includes the one they've discovered. All includes the one that will still generate by themselves. Be generated by themselves. All manner. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. And when he has called unto him, he gave them power against unclean spirits. To do what? To cast out, to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. All simply means it includes the one you have. But mind you, somebody may be saying, Pastor, me, I don't, I'm not sick, but you sleep too much in sickness. Because when you sleep too much, you end up as what? Since you know the answer, why are you sleeping too much? If you sleep too much, the, you see, in the house of a sluggard is poverty. When you sleep too much, you are very sick. You don't need to be warm. Your life is not cold at all. It's hot. So, sleeping too much, so recognize your sickness as a sickness that you want God to heal you. For example, you are very lazy in sickness. Somebody said that, no, me, pastor, me, I'm not sick at all, at all. But I like my man, she she. And no few to walk. They say, come and walk this. They say, the pastor, you see, I'm, I'm allergic to walking, you know, to, um, you're always allergic to everything. That's laziness. You see, I'm allergic to the place where they manufacture things. Okay, come and learn ear dressing. You see, pastor, when I touch ear, my hand is not always smooth. Oh, okay, come and learn uh, uh, catering. He said, pastor, you see, I don't know how to test food very well. Okay, what do you want to do? You're sick. There is a spirit in you that is making you to think that you are, I'm telling you, because somebody may exempt himself that, Pastor, I'm not sick. So I'm letting you know that there are some areas of sickness that is not showing you that they are sick, you are sick. So I'm showing you now. You know, people, people say, oh, far up, I'm off way. So they are hiding themselves from you. I'm not showing you that what you don't know as sickness is sickness. And God needs to heal you if you must go free. Imagine, you don't have a job for the past five years, and yet you are looking for a job. You can't use your brain to think of what to start. Then your brain is sick. If your brain is healed, you will think right. That's why we are initiating something that we started on this issue of those who are looking for school. I mean, want to go to school. It's in two ways. Those who need to be trained for art work, maybe air making, tailoring, catering and stuff like that. And those who need to go to proper school in terms of forwards of schools. So we have announced in, in this service as well. If you have, you know, a, 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 if you have a, maybe you are a tailor, you are, you are a, I mean, an artist, um, whatever you do, maybe you a stylist, you a caterer, whatever. So write your name in the church office. The, a, a, a form has been, you know, I mean, a paper has been provided. You write your name. You write your your handwork. Then you write your number. Then we are trying to see how people amongst us can be incorporated and be trained. Even if you collect money, at least we can negotiate to ensure that we, we help ourselves as a church family. You can't be saying, amen, 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 and you are, yeah, amen, 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 amen. You are sick, you know? So let's help ourselves to, to, to bring ourselves out of the cage of poverty. How long will some people be begging, using your body for, for money? How long? How long? Some people are stylishly using their body to get money. Say, I'm not, I'm dating. You date 10 people in one week. <laughs> you are deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Say, no, I'm just dating. You are dating 10 people because you are collecting the money from 10 people. You say, I'm dating them. It's a lie. It's prostitution in disguise. Please, awake your brain to work. And let God heal your brain. There is money everywhere if you can think very well. There's money everywhere. You can, that's why when God heals your brain, you can think right. You, you, even your discussion will show that you're thinking. Yes. Some people, when they talk, they say, I think. When they talk, you know, it's empty. But God is healing your mind. Yeah. God is healing your brain. Yeah. Why am I talking like this? So that you don't exempt yourself that I'm not sick. 
When your business is not progressive, your business is sick. When your career is on the same spot for the past five years, your career is, is not sick, it's diseased. And in this service, every case of that category, God is healing in the name of Jesus Christ. And in this breaking generational curses service, every curse that has been standing as a siege over your life shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, quickly understand. Breaking something requires a force. If you must break anything, there must be a force to be exerted. True or false? Good. So, but what you are breaking determines the force to be exerted. If I'm to break this or break a pencil, I may not need anybody. I'll just break it. But you can't break a steel with your hand. You can't break. For example, now, if you are to uproot a shrub, it's meant for me when you uproot a tree. A shrub and a tree, they are different. You know what they call a shrub? Okay, let me explain. A shrub are, I mean, shrubs are, you know, those small plants, they, they are not always big. I don't know how to explain better, but they are small, small plants in agriculture. And in, 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 imagine you want to use your hand, you can use your hand to uproot small, small plants, but can you use your hand to uproot a tree? It requires a force. Trees exist for years. So you can't just use your hand. In the same way, the challenge you are going through has been there for years. Small, small prayers will not change it. It's a lie. You, you need a proper power. All those... Uh, when they say pray, you only blow air into the atmosphere. Even you yourself know that you're not saying nothing. Your story can't change. It needs an higher power. Because it has been there for years. Hence, we need to uproot it. That's where the Spirit of God comes in. Hallelujah. Yeah. And in this service, the authority that created them will not uproot such powers in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's why we need a greater power to destroy the curses that have been staying longer than enough. Think about it in your family, nobody gets married on time. And when they are to get married, they must have three children first. Before a permanent man will come and he will still go after five years. What a life. So, nobody goes to school in their family. Nobody goes to school. If they go to school, they finish diploma. That's all. Please don't stop at diploma and think you're going to school. I'm telling you. Irrespective. Don't ever think diploma is the peak. I'm not against it, but I want you to Push. Push. You have a diploma, yes. I'm not a graduate. Grow what? You have not grown anything. Tell God, I must go forward. Glory to God. Because you see, once you stop learning, your brain will start dying. Once you start stop learning, your brain will start appreciating. That's why nowadays people, everything is calculator. Calculator. Two times two. Say, eh, give my phone. Let me type. Two times two. Why? The mind is gone. And many are like that because there's a curse upon the family. Nobody goes beyond this. Nobody goes beyond grade 12. In service, such curses shall be destroyed. Amen. Such curses shall be destroyed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please note that wickedness is real. Oppressions are real. But the good news is this. More in Christ Jesus. 1 John 5 verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcoming the world and this is the victory that overcoming the world even our faith. This morning the faith in the word the faith in the anointing oil and the faith in the name will set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say hello Amen. Amen. But to be free from this just come under the blessing of God. Because no one blessed of God can be cursed by man or devil. To be free, yes, must come under his blessings. When God blesses, he swallows up curses. When God blesses, he swallows up curses. How? Number Exodus 23 verse 25. 
Exodus 23, verse 25. He says, Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless your blood and bless your water. Let me stop it there. Now, Numbers 23, he says, How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How, uh, how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? Now, Numbers 23, verse 20. Look at what will happen to you after the service. He says, Behold, I have received a commandment to bless. And I have blessed, and I cannot reverse it. After you are blessed today, no more cares will survive again. Amen. After you are blessed today, no cares will survive again. Amen. Someone shared a testimony with me yesterday. He said he has spent 2.3 million rand on the leg of her son. They put metals in this patella. I mean, is it patella? Good. Now, and because the leg could not be straight, and every six months they do operation. Sir, there's power here. I'm telling you. And by the grace of God, according to her, she brought the, guy, the boy to me, and we prayed. And after we prayed, that was the end. No more operation. They, they removed it. The leg became straight. It became normal. Sir, there's power here. The leg became normal. They removed the metal implant. And they even said, according to what I was, a doctor, another doctor was telling me, I said that that surgery is supposed to be six million. What, what, okay, what else am I doing? What else is in the life again after six million? What else? So Jesus did it. I was even saying morally, where's my portion now, Abby? Since there's no more. No more uh, 2.3 million just on the lighter mode. But the good news is this. Jesus straightened the leg. I don't care what they've implanted into your system. As I speak right now, Jehovah, the Jehovah himself restores your dignity in the name of Jesus. If there's anyone here that there's a metallic implant in your body, try to be used to support your system. Jesus set you free in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus free in the name of Jesus Christ. But mind you, your serving, your service to God is what unleashes the blessings of God. Your service to God is what unleashes. It opens you up. Where you serve is where you are being paid. But God's pay is not just pay. God's pay is blessing. When you serve God, it doesn't just pay you. It didn't say when you serve, I will pay. It said when you serve, I will bless. When you serve a man, a man pays. They are different though. To pay you your salary is not to pay you your health. They can pay you big money. They can pay you good breathing. <laughs> they can pay you every money. They can even put car for you to drive. But they can't give you sleep to sleep. When God, when you serve God, God blesses. The blessing of God is holistic. That is, it, co it covers of human endeavor. Marital, financial, business, career, destiny, future, and eternity. Thou shalt serve, and he shall bless. That blessing also swallow up curses. He said, I have been commanded to bless. It can be reversed. You are blessed. Amen. I decree you are blessed. Amen. And with this blessing, the curses are swallowed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, stay committed to serving God. Stay committed to rugged service. Rugged service. Rugged service. One of our deacons here was sharing a testimony during the week. He said, Lord, uh, they were, he was being told that maybe he has diabetes or one nonsense disease like that. And he said, God, you know I've been serving you in this church for 25 years. I've been serving for 25 years. 25 years. God is God. You, you, Isaiah 41 verse 21. He says, bring forth your strong cause. Produce your strong reason. Give God a reason why he should heal you. Give God a reason why you cannot be under a spell. Give God a reason why no Sangoma can humiliate you or molest you. 
The good reason why you cannot be under tension at work. The good reason, if you are serving God, you have a claim. Your service puts you on a better platform. Say, God, no, no, no. Isaiah chapter 38. From verse 1 to downward. The Bible says, Ezekiah went to God. Isaiah told Ezekiah, that ah, you're going to die. He said, die what? He went to God. Verse 2 or verse 3, there about. Ezekiah turned his face towards the wall. And he said, remember. I love the word. Remember now, not later. What can you tell God to remember? Remember now, oh Lord, I beseech thee. How I have walked in truth and with a perfect heart. You know, pastor, it's not easy to be perfect. It's not easy. Perfect heart. How I have walked with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah saying, go back. Verse 5. Go and say, <laughs> Thus said the Lord, the God of David, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thee 15 years. God will always respect your service. Serve God. Please, don't be a member. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Don't be a member. Be a follower. Come to church to serve. There's a video so I, I stumbled on yesterday night, in the middle of the night, whereby rapture happened on a Sunday. I put it on my Facebook page for people to see. And many didn't go to heaven. Rapture. So don't say, well, I'm in church. It's a lie. God does not look at your physique to determine your heaven. He looks at your heart of service. Those who don't think, yeah, I'm going to church today. Case rapture happened today, so God can take me. You can't use your brain to calculate God. It's a lie. God knows your ways. He knows your works. Serve him. And shh, you are part of this soul winning. And I see God changing your levels. Amen. I'd like you to close your eyes where you are seated. The Lord, give me the heart of service. Give me a heart of service. I want to serve you. Please pray genuinely. Pray sincerely. Don't pray because I said you should pray it. Pray because you want to serve God. Lord, heart of service. The heart of service. Energy to serve. Desperation to serve. Commitment to serve. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Yeah. One or two individuals, you have been challenged with your poop, I mean, public region, whether a man or a woman, but majorly the kidney side and also your ability to urinate. As I speak right now, after this second, it is over forever. Yeah. In fact, there's somebody here, God is giving you a new kidney. Yeah. No matter, I don't care what doctors have said, creator is one speaking through me. A new kidney is being planted in your body now. Yeah. No need of amen. Go back, do your test. You'll be told, brown kidneys with good spleen, with a proper splinter that will coordinate the flow of your urine. It's not a prayer. All those things I mentioned now, God has put together. 